Okay, again, I'm going to make an animation inside of Illustrator by starting with a big kind of artwork by going under File, New in Illustrator, and I'm going to start with a, again, we're not doing points. You can put pixels inside of this window. I know it says letter right here, and we don't want letter, okay? We want RGB down here for the color, right? RGB down here. And then we want to start with uh, 2560, I think it was, width by, oh, P pixels, PX. Put it, oh, it's going to default. Okay, let's change this over here to pixels. There we go. PX. Make sure it says pixels here, RGB here, 2560 here, and 720 PX here. What's that? Uh, no, because it'll import a vector. Okay, did you get a cut? Okay, we'll spray it on there after I'm done demoing, okay? We have to do it outside so we don't get all toxic chemicals in our... Okay. Uh, DPI, no. Um, it's the nice thing about going from um, Illustrator to Flash is they're both vector applications. So it won't ever be in bitmap. It'll stay vector the whole time. Now, I told you my story of Flash, right? My 1995 story. I didn't tell you that story. I think I thought I did already. 1995, I went to the Seabold Convention in San Francisco. Seabold was the big uh, 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 printing expo they used to have for graphic arts in San Francisco. I don't even know if they still have it. It's called Seabold. And I, I, there was a guy sitting at a booth all by himself with a silicon graphics computer in front of him. Silicon graphics was like that big, powerful graphics computer back then. And he was showing a vector-based program, kind of like Illustrator, but he said he was going to take these vectors and put them on the internet. Okay, and there was going to be internet animation using this vector-based program. And the vector-based program was called Future Splash. And that ended up being evolved into Flash. Okay, that's on the test. We had a test. The last question on that test was, what was the original name of Flash? And it's the future Splash. Okay, let's move on. Hit OK. Don't worry about background or anything. I know it looks big, but then just draw it. Like I just said, I'm going to draw. A, you can just make simple. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you're... you're, you're, you're um, your skateboarder guy's on a separate layer. That's it. So I have one layer. I'm going to call it background. Background. And again, I'm just going to draw a scene. You can draw any scene you want. Uh, I'm just going to make gray. Gray. If I can make gray. I'll make gray here. I'll make gray. I don't have this. Right. I don't. No, I don't want that. This. No. This. No. How do I set this back to normal? Ugh, evil. Thank you. Woo, you are wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to make a, a kind of a street. There's my road. So I'm just going to use a rectangle. There's my road. And then maybe make another smaller rectangle. That's yellow. Yellow. That's for my, right, in the street, they got yellow kind of things, right? So, and I can duplicate that a couple times for my street. Duplicate it. Don't worry, we can evenly space it using our distribute option, right? So, again, I'm just making a road... You can think of what your road might look like, right? Just like in, um, you know, Bob Ross. You're making a happy tree. Just think about what your happy tree looks like. Alignment is what I want. Evenly distribute. There we go. So we have a road. And then maybe um, let's make some mountains. Or how about we have a green, green, green grass. Let's 
not green. Make some green grass. And then maybe um maybe some mountains. Some rolling hills. Remember, didn't we draw like Big Sur one time? Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Uh oh. Let me start over. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. Rolling hill. And since it's California, we'll make the rolling hills kind of brown. Hasn't rained in a while. Maybe make the stroke a little bigger. Send that to the back. Ooh, that's some ugly rolling hills. And then, of course, we need a sky. Make a sky. Beautiful sky. Send that to the back. There we go. And, oh, do you want some clouds in there? Put some clouds in there. Fluffy clouds. No. Can I fill that in? No, I guess I had to go back to the very beginning to fill that in. Hold on. Oh, that was a paintbrush, wasn't it? Oh, blob brush. You can use the something called the blob brush to make a blob brush. Yeah, that's not a very big blob, is it? Big blob, big blob. There we go. Is that a cloud? There's a cloud. How about we duplicate that cloud? Make it easier on ourselves. There we go. See, in, in animation, you repeat things a lot. Saves on time and energy. So we have rolling hill, green grass, our street. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to make a skateboarder. Again, that skateboarder. I might lock the bottom layer so I don't mess with that. Again, the skateboarder will have round wheels. Round wheels. And maybe put some uh, lines in there so we can see it animate. Nope. I'm going to group that together there. And then, what does the skateboard look like? It's kind of. See the wheels on there? There we go. And. Uh, the skateboard. And then we got to draw a dude. A dude skateboarding. Oh, blob brush tool. And we'll make a dude. A stick dude is fine. Stick dude. Yes. There he is. 
and just put a smile on his face. There he is. So just make sure your skateboarder is on a separate layer. So take it a few moments, draw something, anything could be fun, but just think of moving three things. We're going to have this move, this whole thing move, and then the background move. Anything is fine. Triangle, whatever, because we're going to help them start to sneak back in. Okay, so I finished my artwork. Again, the most important thing was to have um, the two layers. You all also might want to um, group the wheels. That makes it easier to select all the pieces inside of Flash to make what we call a uh, movie clip. So um, let's talk a little bit about the animation before we even get there. So for, for the wheel, um, all I'm going to do is have it cycle between being one way and then being another way. So it's going to loop it over and over again. Now it looks like it's spinning because the artwork is changing, but it's really going to be flipping between two scenes over and over and over and over and over again. It just makes it look like it's rotating, but it's really not rotating. It just looks like it is. Okay, so that's why I grouped them together so I could do that. So to save them inside of Illustrator, you just save as Illustrator file. Save as Illustrator file. Um, you can leave all the default settings right there. It's fine. So save as Illustrator, and I'm going to quit Illustrator, and I'm going to go and open Flash. Um, let me save my first sample. So um, to find Flash on these computers, it's not in your dock down here. As you can tell, it's not in the dock down here. So if you go underneath the Macintosh hard drive in the upper right corner and open up your applications folder right there, you'll see we have all the Adobe applications. Okay, The two that I would animate in would be either After Effects or Flash or Photoshop. You can animate in Photoshop or Premiere. One, All of these can do animations right there, all of them. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use Flash because Flash is fun. I'm going to open up the Flash application by twirling this triangle down and then opening up the application. Once the application is open, I'm going to start with a new project, a new project by going under File, New, File, New. And But the default size or window size is 550 by 400. But of course, we want to do it as an animation that's going to be on YouTube and, and a, a high definition version of YouTube. You would put in, I'm going to put in 1280 for the width and then 720 for the height. Now, one of the things about doing animation is you have something called frame rate. Um, frame rate is how many pictures are displayed on the screen. Um, and that's where you get your animation. It's basically cycling through pictures, right? If you think about it, when you're at the movie theater, right? You're sitting in the movie theater and the projector's up there and you're looking at pictures. That's where the word motion picture comes from, right? You're looking at pictures going so fast in front of you that it looks like motion. Well, in the movie theater, they, they, they run at 24 frames a second. So Flash defaults to 24 frames a second. You don't have to use that, though. You can use 30 frames a second, which is more television standard, or you can do 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, whatever you want. You can do two frames a second if you want. You can put any number up there. I'm going to use the default 24 is fine with me. I'm just pointing it out. So again, to get this window, I was under File, New, and I was in this window. I put in 720 or 1280 by 720 pixels, 24 frames a second, and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see. You might not need to. Again, this is the window. You could think of the window as a, a, a it's, the, the reason why I'm using it's called the stage. It's called the stage, but I like to use the, the, the idea of a window because you're going to have things outside and you put them on, right? Yes? 24 is fine. Again, you can take things outside and put them on 
this is the visible area, right? So you can have characters off the screen and then come on and then off and then on. Like my skateboarder is going to start out here and he's going to come on and then he's going to stop in the middle and then the background is going to move. Okay, that's how you, you saw the sample. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to import those pieces that we have, those, um, those two layers, and we have to do what's called a movie clip. In order to animate them, you have to make them what's called a movie clip. So after we import them, so let's import the Illustrator file by going under File, Import, and we're going to import to Stage, which means take the artwork and put it right on to the, the, the visible area. So go under File, Import, Import to Stage. I'm going to choose my dude, or whatever I call it, Illustrator file, and then hit Open. In the older versions of Flash, um, they used to ask you if you want to make a movie clip and all this other things as you were importing. I don't know why it's not doing this anymore. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to leave the default there, and then I'm going to hit OK. What you'll see the, towards the bottom is you'll see something called the timeline. This is your moments in time. Remember, it's going to be flashing pictures up on the screen so fast that it looks like it's motion. Each one of these represents a frame. Yeah. Let me pause my movie here. We need to make these objects a movie clip in order to animate them. What a movie clip is is where you take the artwork and kind of group it together so that you can move it as a group. So if you look down here in the timeline, you'll notice you have one layer should be skateboard, the other one background. So I'm going to click on the background and I'm going to go up where it says modify and I'm going to convert to a symbol. A symbol is something that you move or do something with or a program. If you're going to use the programming, it needs to be a symbol. So everything that you want to do, like mo move or animate or, or program, needs to be a symbol. So again, I click down here in the timeline where it says uh, a background right there, and I go underneath modify, convert to symbol, and I'm going to call it background. And just so it says movie clip is right there, it's fine. Next time, I'm going to click on the skateboard this time, and I'm going to go up where it says Modify, Convert to Symbol. I think I did that in, in Illustrator already for you, so you don't probably have to do it to the skateboarder. Okay. So, uh, again, do the same thing. I'm going to call it uh, Skate Dude, like that. Okay, now it sees these things as groups, and we can animate them now. But before we animate them, we want the wheels to spin on the skateboard guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert the wheels to a, a movie clip and we're going to move them a little bit. So watch how I do this. I'm going to do it by double clicking on the dude, on my skateboard dude, twice. It's going to take me into what, what's called an editing mode. And if you look up here, you'll notice now it says skate dude. Notice how the background grays out. And the reason why the background grays out is because I'm in an editing mode for this dude or the skate dude. So again, all I did was double click on them. Next, I'm going to click on the wheels themselves to select them twice. When I do them, if I select the wheel twice, you'll notice it should, that's why I said group it, it should then go into the group mode. Notice how everything grayed out except for the wheel. You can zoom in by hitting Command Plus if you want to get a little closer so you can see it. Again, I double clicked on the wheel and I'm going to make this a symbol. I'm going to make this a symbol also by going under Modify, convert the symbol, and I'm going to call it wheel one, wheel one. And then I'm going to go, so after I made this one a symbol, I'm going to go back to the skate dude right here by clicking on skate dude right here. And I'm going to double click on this wheel over here to go into this mode. And again, I'm going to make this a symbol also by going underneath modify, convert the symbol, and I'm going to call this wheel two. So again, I'm going to go back out to the skate dude. So see if you can get to that point. To rotate, I'm going to double click on the, the, the symbol for the wheel. So I, I'm in the wheel mode. So double click. I'm in the wheel mode. It should say wheel one up here. You want it to say wheel one up here. If you made a wheel, 
that you want to rotate, it should say wheel one up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another version of the wheel and I'm going to rotate it. To make another version of the wheel and have it rotate is down here in the timeline down here. You'll notice there is a little um, one right there. That's one frame that has the wheel in one position. I'm going to click next to it, right next to number one here. Some of you are not doing this. Remember that? You, do, you don't have wheels spinning, so you don't have to do this. I'm going to click next to it, and I'm going to hit F6 on the keyboard. Makes another version of the wheel, another version of the wheel. And then once I have another version of the wheel, so now I have two wheels. I have one in one and one in two. I have two versions of the wheel. I'm going to click on the one that's in number two. I'm going to go to this option right here. It's called transform right here. And I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. Okay, 45 degrees. Because that's what it's going to do. See, see, it's going to loop between these two. See it looping right now? You can see it looping. It's going to just keep going like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that that's how you do it. Uh, a, a simple animation that you want to loop is you can do things that repeat and do them like this. They got to be in a symbol. I'm going to do the same thing for wheel number two. I'm going to click on my. I'm going to go back out. See how I'm going up layers and down layers and up layers and down layers up here. I'm going to go back to my skate dude. I'm going to double click on my second wheel to it says wheel two up here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the front wheel is I'm going to click next to it, number two, and down here in the timeline. Next to number one is frame number two. I'm going to hit F6 on the keyboard. Makes a second version of the wheel. Then I'm going to come over to this transform option, which is right here, and I'm going to put 45 degrees in there also again so that it rotates. And again, this, this back wheel will do the same thing. It'll just keep looping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way through there. And once I'm all done doing all that, I'm going to go all the way to the very top layer. I'm going to click on where it says Scene 1, and I'm going to start animating. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But that's how you can get it. Now, you're not going to see the animation do that until the very end that little looping of the wheel. Okay, now if I click on the background and move it down, you can see the canvas is right here. See the, 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 the window, what we call the window? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the landscape start on the left side by moving it all the way over to this side over here. I'm going to move my landscape so it starts on the very edge right here. Notice again, I can move it around. I'm moving it around. I want to start the landscape in the window on this edge over here. We'll start it over here. Again, the skateboard dude's outside. If your skateboard dude is not outside the visible area, just move him over there. He should be in a dark area. You don't want the skateboard to start there. You want him to, to move on. So again, I'm clicking on the landscape. I'm going to line it up with the edge right here. And I'm going to keep the dude outside. He's going to be a little bit outside. So let's talk about the, so again, I prepared a little bit. The dude is outside the visible area. And the landscape, again, starts on the edge of the frame right there. So now I'm, I'm ready to start animate. How I'm going to animate is I'm going to move the, the, the dude onto the screen right about here. It's kind of in the center there, yeah, somewhere right around there, like in the center here. And then he's going to stay there, and then the landscape's going to move. So how I do that is down here in the timeline. Down in the timeline, you have these things called frames. I'm going to go out to maybe 35 for the skateboard. So I'm going to click on number 35 for the skateboard right here. I'm going to highlight it. So again, in the skateboard layer, I'm going to go out to around 35, and I'm going to hit F6 on the keyboard. What F6 does, don't worry about your, your, your background being gone. That's OK. Don't worry about the background being gone, because um, it's not at 35 at this point. That's why it's gone. I'm going to take the skateboard dude, and I'm going to move him onto the screen. Then I'm going to go all the way out to maybe 70, and I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard. Because the reason why I hit F5 instead of F6 is I don't need him to move anymore. So if it's not moving, you can use F5. If it is moving, you want to use F6 and puts these things called keyframes in there. So again, at the beginning, he's outside. At 35, he's on the inside. And at 70, he's staying in the same spot. I'm going to do the same thing for the background. For the background, I'm going to go out to 35, and I'm going to hit F6 on the keyboard. Then I'm going to go all the way out to number 70, and I'm going to hit F6 on the keyboard. 
And the reason why is because I want the landscape to move at number 70. I want the landscape to be all the way over on this side over here because it's going to move between 35 and 70. It's going to move across. So again, let's repeat. Between 1 and 35, the skateboarder guy should be here, but the landscape doesn't move. And between 35 and 70, the landscape is going to be moving. So after I've set these up, the last thing I need to do is tell the program to put the in-between frames. What the in-between frames are is it puts keyframes. It'll animate between them. To do that, I click on the first one right here, number one uh, for the skateboard dude, and I right-click on it, and I'm going to say Create Classic Tween. Create Classic Tween. What that'll do is you'll see the skateboard dude. It'll put all these keyframes in here. It'll put them in, 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 in place for you, okay? So that's how you get the motion going. Remember, I had them at number 35. I have them in the middle of the screen. So what I'm telling the computer to do between 1 and 35 is I'm saying, okay, let's, let's calculate the ones in between there and there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the landscape. I'm going to click on number 35 here. I'm going to right-click on number 35, and I'm going to say Create Classic Tween. And between 35 and 70, the background now will animate. So again... When you're all done doing that, if you go underneath the control test movie, test in browser, it'll open it up inside of the browser, and you might need to zoom out a little bit here so you can see it, but you'll see that's how the animation works.